Well, I want to welcome everybody, especially our alumni. This is really exciting. Um, before we have prayer and then start our concert, I just want to share a little, um, a little story with you. There was, um, there was a real challenging year here. And um, just students had no interest at all in spiritual things and were really cantankerous. And, um, and so we decided, you know, we needed to make a stand for Christ and say, you know what? We only want students who are, who are interested in having a Christian experience. And so our enrollment went from the 30s down to the teens. But we were praying every day that the Lord would send us students who were spiritually focused. And I realized that um, the Lord was answering our prayer. Because um, what is the boys' dorm now it used to be the girls' dorm. And I was working remodeling the girls' dorm. And, um, and while I was doing that, um, two of the, uh, the brand new students came in. And one of them was uh, Abby Martins. And the other was uh, Wendy Granados. And they came in and they sat down at the piano and they started playing hymns, singing spiritual songs while I was working. And I realized at that moment that the Lord was changing things and, and bringing us back to being spiritual and focused on Christ. And, and that was the big turning point for Heritage Academy. And, um, and that whole group is here. And they're here to do a, a concert for us. And I, I cannot tell you, I cannot express clearly enough how thankful I am that they all came because they were a huge answer to prayer and they were a huge turning point for Heritage Academy. So I just I praise the Lord for each one of them. And we're going to be blessed tonight by their music. Um, now Denise uh, Bailey is going to have an opening word of prayer for us. Well, it's good to see lots of alumni that we've not seen for a long time, and um, let's bow our heads for our opening word of prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this day, and thank you for all your many blessings. Thank you for the ones who have already made it here, and please be with those who are still traveling here for uh, either tonight or tomorrow, and please bless this program tonight and help people to have a blessing, and Lord, please be with all of our family and our friends and uh, all those around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. So we wanted to welcome you over to our concert. Uh, we are so excited to be able to worship God with you, uh, not only as a family, but also as a church family. And not only beyond that, we are also a Heritage uh, Academy family. And uh, isn't it wonderful that you can come from different parts of the world and uh, be able to come and study here. Uh, and we want to Right now, thank the faculty here at Heritage Academy because it's not easy. It's not easy. We know how difficult it is. It's a challenge, and it's a, it's a mission, and we appreciate the faculty for doing that. It's a sacrifice. Uh, and we also know as students, somebody said we made it, <laughs> and uh, we have made it. Uh, we welcome all the alumni who have come over here, those who are watching. We thank you for tuning in. And uh, we're so excited to be uh, able to sing to the Lord together. Now, I'm just going to ask some questions really quick and uh, as we get the group together. Um, those who have traveled about 30 minutes from here, raise your hand. Who lives about 30 minutes from here? All right, 30 minutes, good. How about an hour? Who lives about an hour away? Not yet. 
How about two hours away? All right, two hours. How about three hours? Anybody? Three hours, good. All right, four? Four hours. How about five? Five hours. Thank you so very much. Okay, anybody more than five hours? Oh my goodness, okay, so how far? Missouri. Thank you so much for coming over here. And I know some of the students here just came from Alaska, so that's pretty far. Uh, so we're so thankful that you guys are here. Uh, we know that your ministry impacted so many lives, uh, including the moose that I saw yeah. pictures of. So that was incredible. Um, but that's what Heritage Academy is all about, right? Being able to touch lives, being able to not only grow spiritually, but also academically uh, and physically here. Um, and so that's such a beautiful part of why, as alumni, what we've learned from being here. And so these are for the students now that are sitting here at the pews. Uh, and those that are watching who will be, are kind of deciding, should I go? Go ahead and come. Because you will be able to learn skills that you will not be able to have anywhere else. Uh, leadership skills that uh, only here you're allowed to develop and present and grow. And uh, so that's the beauty of being able to, and you know, if God is calling you and God has shown you to come over here, um, you are at the right place at the right time. He made you for a time such as this. And so we're so thankful that you are here. And uh, so you will see the family. Uh, you will be able to see uh, all of us uh, being able to sing. And uh, we hope that you enjoy the music. And uh, uh, as we pray that the music will impact and touch your hearts, thank you. Without a doubt, we'll know. 
we have been revived when we shall. Good evening to all of you here. It is such a blessing to be back in home ground, to be here with you today. 
and to open up the Sabbath in worship and praise. And that's what we want tonight to be. We want it to be a night of worship and praise. And I already saw some of you singing along. So please join us in worship and praise. Um, you know, many of you may not know this, but most of the uh, participants up here are related. And uh, we're all family. And um, it's a family music ministry. But the Lord called us to unite our talents um, and use them for um, spreading the good news, spreading the gospel, spreading that the Lord is coming soon because we truly believe it, and to spread hope, the hope we have in salvation in our Savior. So as one big family, we chose to listen to the call of the Lord and serve the Lord. serve the Lord, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will kneel in one accord, giving thanks to the blessed Savior for the peace His love affords. We have found the greatest joy of living, we will serve the Lord. We are standing as a family, as a household strong in faith, for the Father has provided us the grace by which we're saved. So with grateful hearts we and praise his holy name until forever comes we will proclaim we will serve the lord we will serve the lord as for me and my house we will kneel in one accord giving thanks to the blessed savior for the peace his love affords we have found the greatest joy of living we will serve the lord every need has provided like he promised that he would and we know that he is working all together for our good For me and my house, we will kneel in one accord, giving thanks to the blessed Savior for the peace his love affords. We have found the greatest joy of living. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will kneel in one accord, giving thanks to the blessed Savior for the peace his love affords. We have found the greatest joy of living, we will serve the Lord. Giving thanks to the blessed Savior for the peace his love affords. We have found the greatest joy of living, we will serve the Lord. Let's do it again. We will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will kneel in one accord, giving thanks to the blessed Savior for the peace his love affords. We have found the greatest joy of living, found the greatest joy of living. We will serve the so good to be back. For those of you who don't know us, we are the Castells family. And uh, at least one of the Castells family. Yeah, I was going to say, we're the second Castells family <laughs> here. So You are the second. No, no, you're actually the first Castells family. You're older than me. But uh, my name is Ben. I sing tenor. And I've been married to my beautiful wife here for the last 17 years, almost 17, in June. So how did you guys meet? We actually we met, met at Heritage. Here. <laughs> Heritage Academy. No. All right, don't get any ideas. Don't get any ideas. They probably didn't want me to share this information. 
Hey, it progressed from friends to brothers and sisters. There was a slow friendship progression. Oh, yeah. 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 Don't ever, don't ever call somebody your brother and sister unless you really plan here at Heritage as a friendship. Unless you really plan on making that progress. But anyway, um, yeah, we we have enjoyed our our time as a family praising God. And this is my um, again my wife. What do you I, sing? And I sing tenor in the group. And I'll my name is the... Abigail, Abigail Castells, and I sing soprano. And these are our three beautiful children. And the oldest, go ahead, from oldest to youngest. My name is Jaden. My name is Noelle. My name is Adassa. And uh, I'm Jonathan, and uh, uh, I sing tenor, and this is my beautiful wife. Yes, my name is Sineda Castells, as well. And these are our four uh, beautiful blessings that God gave us, and I sing soprano. What are your names? And this is Josiah. Olivia. Eliza. Isabella. And we'll, we'll take it over to uh, the bass of the group. The chain side. All right, guys. I'm, my name is Kevin, and I sing bass. And I'm married to this, yes, thank you, honey. That's my daughter, our daughter. <laughs> She's a year and a half now, and you know, you know how they are at that stage. But um, I'm a former student of Heritage Academy, and this lovely lady here to my left, who I also met here, who is, <laughs> she wasn't a student at the time, so I can she tell you all about She was just an acquaintance later. at first, right? And we've been married for, going on 11 years, so. And, and we love, obviously, singing and praising and, and worshiping together, so it's an honor to obviously be here. My first alumni, obviously, in, in like 20-something years, so to do my first alumni like this is, is really, truly special, so I hope you enjoy. And I'm Jessica, his wife. This is Brielle. I sing alto, um, and this is Brielle. Brielle, can you Brielle. say hi? Brielle. Say hi. Hi. Say hi. No? <laughs> She's like, I don't know who's putting Sometimes. a mic in my face. We are the other part of the Changs. Uh, my name is Ken. I'm the baritone of this group. Um, this is my amazing wife, Suhai, and our miracle baby, Joselyn Hannah, who happens to turn 11 months old today. So, yeah, right. we are that, very honored to be here. That is beautiful. And like he said, I'm Suhai, and um, this is our little baby. Do you want to say hi? She just woke up from a nap. We woke her up. Um, and I am the other alto, and it is such an honor to be here. We are not heritage alumni, but nonetheless, we married to some. Yes, and siblings. Well, no. siblings. <laughs> siblings. Well, anyway, this is an honor for not only us, but uh, for anybody that hears them. The youngest members of the group are going to sing for you right now a message about how wonderful God made each and every one of us.
Oh, there are so many beautiful stories in the Bible, and you guys have such great imaginations. Can you tell me of another one? Anyone? you get started and that's how most of us got started very young very little and um, it's there's they're just such a blessing they all love to sing and many of them are learning instruments um, so I think some of you already got the idea that a lot of us up here did go to Heritage Academy a lot of us are alumni graduates from Heritage Academy so uh, my husband and I graduated from Heritage Academy in 03, 2003. Did I have to that say it? Ago? I know. Oh. Um, Thank you for aging. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Jonathan was from what year? I think you already said it earlier. Oh, uh, we were just talking about it earlier. It's like been like 20 some years. 2002. 2002. Oh, two. Oh, two. One year before. And Kevin was here with us in 2000 to 2001. And Jesse graduated from here in 2006. I'm terrible with dates. 2006. Um, and we're not gonna we're not gonna even say who was good or who were, who were the rebels, you know. But you have people that you know. <laughs> Washed a lot of dishes. <laughs> Actually. Kevin and I used to always meet because we, we always had community service because we were always late to classes. Not on purpose. We would we were, try. We were the last two running up the field, the grass field. To yes, the but we would say, see you so. Sunday, community service. Well, um, we learned how to work a, a greenhouse, no? Yes, yes. We learned a lot of good things. But I guess with that, we just wanted to share that, you know what? You might be in school right now. You may not know why you're here. Maybe you have lots of questions, wondering if God is truly real, why the staff care so much about every little detail of your life, but it's because they care, and it's because they want you, like the first song said, one of the first songs, do you know the Savior? They want you to get to know the Savior, and that was one of the greatest blessings of my life here at Heritage, was seeing that, that care and love, and yes, you may not feel it from everybody, we don't all jive perfectly, right? But to know that a school and its staff care about you, and that's their main goal, is to help you get to know Jesus. And that's really what brought us all here together, is that we all love the Lord. We want to share that with others, because Jesus came to pay a great price for every one of us. Let's 
our precious little one is, as you can hear, she is our miracle baby. Um, so about 2020, we were told by doctors that we would be nearly impossible to conceive on our own, which you can imagine, we were devastated. But God had a different plan for us, and he blessed us with our first miracle baby in the summer of 2020. Um, and we thought our infertility journey is over, what a miracle, what a blessing, and we were ready to testify to everyone that God really answers prayers. Um, and then in November of 2020, November 6th to be precise, we were going for just a routine checkup, 24 weeks, and we learned the devastating news that our precious little one had died. So we then began the journey of sorrow, devastation, confusion, and maybe even at sometimes a little bit of like asking God, God why? 
Um, but as we continued and our family was grieving with us and supporting us, we returned back and continued to pray to God. And throughout our grief journey, he continued to sustain us. Um, there were many countless um, moments of sorrow, devastation, lots of moments of hopelessness with recurring pregnancy losses and high-risk pregnancy for Joslyn, and moments where we, the devil would make us think and feel, you're alone, no one gets it, we would not, there were times that God's voice was way too quiet for what we wanted, um, and yet through all of that, he was still sustaining us, and we honestly felt he's still here with us, he is still with us through it all. And our hope in sharing this, this, our testimony and this song that's coming up is that for any of you that may be struggling with anything or maybe you don't know where God's plan is for you. I know I've been there when I was in high school. Um, or maybe you're wondering, where is God? I don't feel him, I can't hear him. And the devil really tries to tell you, God is not there, he doesn't care about any of you anymore. Um, but we, are living proof, and so is our little one, that no matter what, God really does get you through it all. That even when the devil tries to tear you down and make you think that, you know, it's over, there's no hope, he really will still be there. And so our hope is that you guys continue to seek him, praying for him, praying for, to God, sorry, um, and for all of us as well, you know, as he blesses our ministry.
So many of us here, most of us here, have had experience in some shape or form with music in our family since we were young. And um, when my sister and I, Jessica, I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a lot of siblings up here, okay? So my sister, then the other two girls, sisters, brothers right here, and brothers to my left. It's all legit. Um, but I just wanted to say that uh, when my sister and I were young, we loved singing. And so my parents took uh, opportunity of that and they would travel, we would travel around um, the states, Central America, South America, doing children's concerts uh, at churches, sacred children's concerts. And I believe we started around the time um, my sister was four and I was eight. Um, but one particular time, we had done some concerts in Mexico and we were traveling back home to Illinois. My dad had already flown back ahead of us due to getting back to work. And um, my mom, my sister, and I were at the airport, and I fell sick. And I fell so sick that when we tried to get on the plane, we had a connection in Denver. In Denver, when we tried to get back on the plane to get home, uh, the flight attendants looked at me and was, were like, she doesn't look okay, she's sick, so they called the medics. Sure enough, I had a really high fever, and they wouldn't let me get on the plane. They were like, nope, she needs to go to hospital. So. To make it a little shorter, my sister and I and my mom ended up going to a hospital in Denver, Colorado. And after several days of my fever not going down after antibiotics and all types of medicine that they would give me, um, they were getting concerned. And I could hear them talking to my mom. And at one point they said, Araceli, you need to call your husband. He needs to come because we don't know how this is going to end. And I remember my mom calling my dad with tears in her eyes and, and in her voice and saying, you need to come. We don't know if she's going to make it. And she probably thought I didn't hear her because she was at a distance at, by the door. But I heard her. And um, I, I was growing delirious. And I can't recall if my dad, I think my dad was already there. Um, in fact, I thought he was an elephant walking into the room. That's how bad my fever was. But when, they, when my dad and my mom were next to my bed and I could hear them praying, I started singing one of my favorite songs <laughs> with a weak voice, obviously. But I started singing and claiming Jesus' name. And it was one of my favorite songs, and it was Jesus, the sweetest name of all. And um, I sang that song because I knew that in that, in, those, in that kind of moment, the only one that can help us is God. And I also wanted to help my parents to have peace because I, I could tell that they were suffering and concerned. And well, um, I don't know how many hours later, my fever dropped and I was okay. And it was all because of Jesus. It was because of claiming his name. And that when, I, when my fever broke, I remember the nurses and doctors all being around and saying, it's a miracle. We don't, we don't know why. We haven't given her any other different medicine and any of the antibi antibiotics we've tried haven't worked. And my parents said, well, we prayed. And she sang and called on Jesus' name. And ever since then, we uh, vowed that the rest of the concerts my sister and I would do, I would sing that song. So we thought it only appropriate to not only share that testimony with you, that there is still power in Jesus' name.
Jesus came and rescued me from the sinful man I used to be. I've been My life has been changed. My outlook has been Since I've been saved, I'm walking different now. I'm talking different now. I'm a new creature in Christ. I have been given.
Since I've been saved. And Christ said, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? A new creature, right? All things have passed away. All things, all things have been made new. And that's a promise that each of us can claim and take that to the bank. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen And brother, this could be the very day I have learned in all that happened just to praise him For I know he's working all things for my good Every tear I shed is worth all the investment promised I know here can hardly fathom all the things he has in store for those who pray I just feel like something good is about to happen and brother this could be that very day I just feel like something good is about to happen I just feel like something good is on its way he has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be the very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be, sister, this could be, brother, this could be the very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised that he'd open all of heaven. And brother, it could happen any day. When God's people humble themselves and call on Jesus. And they look to heaven expecting as they pray. I just feel 
like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be that very day. I just feel like something good is about to happen. And brother, this could be, sister, this could be, brother, this could be that very day. There's a, a quote that says in the spirit of prophecy that when we pray, we need to have faith that our prayers are going to be answered. Also, addition to that is that we need to pray according to whose will? Ours? Our will? No. God's will. Because our heart is deceitful. Even with, even with We don't even know our, our full intent of our own heart, as the Bible says, but God knows our heart. We ask his will to be done. We need to expect that he will answer, and he does. He never fails. And God came down to this world, Jesus did, in order to do something for us, something that we couldn't even do ourselves, no matter how hard we tried, and that is to bring salvation. And he came down. He became a baby. Just a little while ago, we remembered his death and resurrection. And we praise God. How many of you praise God today for that resurrection, that death and resurrection that he did so that we could have the ability to come to him in prayer and say, Lord, I want you to be the king of my life. I want to have that salvation. I want to be with you for all eternity. Isn't that why he came?
For our very last song to close, we told God that he put it in our hearts to go into ministry for music. We've told you that already. But we also felt very impressed that we needed to share something different, something truthful, and that is the three angels' message. Can anybody tell me of you studious Heritage Academy students where the three angels' message is found? Revelation 14. What verse? Six. Very good. We started in verse six. You guys know it, right? If you don't have it, look it up. You can read it with me. And it says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. If you have the King James Version, you can read out loud too. To preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. Saying with a loud voice, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him that made the heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. 
that great city because she made all nations drink of the, wrath, the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. It's beautiful because there's another part that says, And another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. Isn't it amazing that Revelation is just full of verses that have to do with angels? We're supposed to take this message. We're supposed to take this beautiful message to all the world. Christ came, he died, he resurrected, and he's saying to you today, if you haven't accepted him as your Lord and Savior, he's knocking on that heart, and he's saying, please let me in. I want you to spend all eternity with me. I don't want you to be left behind. I don't want you to suffer the, the, the last death. I want you to spend eternity with me because I love you. I created you before the foundation of this world. I knew your name. And I thought, you know what? I love him so much. I love her so much that I'm going to send my son down to this world to suffer the things that we can't even begin to imagine. And then for him to raise again, to take the keys from Satan of Hades and hell and say, I'm in control of death now. I get to resurrect whoever I deem worthy. And those that accept me are so worthy of that resurrection and eternal life. If you haven't accepted him yet, please do so. And spread that message of that resurrection, of that eternal life that he wants to give each and every one of us. Washed white 
in the blood of the Lamb. The mighty band will start to play the hallelujah chorus that day. That's where we want to be. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you thanking you for this opportunity. This opportunity to praise your name, to worship together with saints that have given their hearts to you. Thank you so much for this opportunity to welcome in a Sabbath another day of worship, another day where I know there's angels that are praising you in heaven, but you're looking even more to that as those of your people that are praising your name here on this earth. Lord, we thank you so much for that opportunity. We thank you that we're here gathered together as students, alumni, and we ask that your blessing be upon this weekend, that we may grow closer and closer to you, to the likeness of Christ that the Holy Spirit may dwell in our lives and that he may guide each and every step that we take. Keep us in your grace, keep us in your love, and we ask your blessings. In Jesus' precious and holy name we pray, amen. <laughs>